and trading in black gold, in uh, learning how to save energy, and uh, how to exploit the new sources of energy. Some of these games were emphasizing the possibility of growing rich through oil exploration in the North Sea, like uh, off offshore oil strike, or also others like Alaska Pipeline um, were trying to involve you and us in uh, the construction of a new pipeline that uh, later, in 1978, was really built in spite of the opposition of the environmental groups. Others of these uh, board games were uh, presenting a totally different uh, um, political, economical scenarios, like this one, Petropolis, in oil we trust, which was produced in a limited edition and sent to the most prominent people all over the world. Others, in particular, a very interesting one, Oil War, American intervention in the Persian Gulf, anticipated by some decades American military involvement in the Middle East. A large portion of these uh, new board games played an educational role, putting forward practices for reducing consumption and using new sources of energy. For example, the object of Millage Game was, of course, uh, to travel the greatest number of miles with the least possible gas consumption. And uh, another one, energy crisis, was uh, uh, setting as an objective for players to become self-sufficient by improving their home with solar energy collectors and with insulation and uh, by getting a degree in energy conservation. And in the instruction, uh, it was explained that uh, we are using up our non-renewable fossil fuels at an alarming rate, but uh, that we can also learn to conserve and use solar energy for our energy needs. In a familiar and in a certain way not intimidating way, these games introduce players to the profound dramatic changes that Western society and Japan faced, precipitated in that by the oil embargo OPEC countries declared on October 17, 1973. The Yom Kippur War had broken beginning of October, October the 6th, when Egypt and Syria attacked Israel. And after an increase of the oil price on October 17, the minister of the Arab countries agreed on an embargo on the export of oil to the West and Japan, cutting oil export 5% every month. In October 18, all the newspapers all over the world carried this kind of news, which, uh, this was in the New York Times, uh, it was a kind of a symbolic day in which we can put um, the end of what the economists, especially in France, they consider the 30th glorious year, the one from the end of Second World War to 1973, in which the world has, uh, and humanity has uh, seen an incredible period of growth and prosperity, unprecedented in the human history. Clearly, in this situation, oil was uh, being used as a weapon of political pressure and very successful. The price of oil went from, in a few months, $2.59 to $11.65 and reached also the point of $22.60 at one point. So, in the following years, Western nations experienced an economic crisis that uh, took the unusual form of stagflation, which means uh, recession combined with inflation, and introduced also sweeping changes in their system of production, at least. Uh, 
When there was another change in Iran, another crisis in 1979, there was a second oil crisis. And only later, when the price of oil began to drop again, this kind of crisis had been forgotten. And also all that they entailed, long lines at the gas pump, full rationing, low, lower speed limits, car-free Sunday, this is a highway in Germany in the uh, November 1973 when traffic circulation was banned. And this is again in Germany, hikers along the highway on Sunday days. In the United States, uh, thanks to Richard Nixon, um, the thermostats set at 66, 66 to 68 Fahrenheit cutbacks in hours of operation for school, offices, and factories. So that is just a, a general mm, a portrait of some of the changes that were put in place in those months. One after another, in November and December 1973, the president and prime minister of the Western countries appear on TV in their respective countries to announce emergency measure being taken to face the crisis and to contain energy consumption. First, Richard Nixon, November 7th, he announced uh, the reduced quantity of fuel for aircraft, uh, reduction of 15% in the supply of eating oil for homes and for offices, and generally less heat less electricity, less gasoline. Pierre Trudeau, the Canadian prime minister, was, uh, how can I say, quite an exception in this panorama of all the president because, uh, and let me say that uh, sounds to me very Canadian, he proposed a voluntary program of uh, reducing energy consumption, um, avoiding to establish a um, national decision on rationing oil supplies. But in France, Mesmer announced low, lower speed limits. Uh, he banned the illuminated advertising. In uh, Great Britain, uh, Edward Heath, uh, he informed the country of the need of limiting the use of electricity by almost all factories, shops, and offices to three days a week. And the place also restriction on late night television. In other countries like Denmark and Italy, there were very strong uh, uh, regulation about uh, circulation of cars. So, in the face of this dramatic state, uh, what was the reaction of um, architectural and urban thinking? Let's say that uh, in the previous years and the previous decades, we can see a lot of research going on. Suddenly, all these kind of accumulated experiments, they took on a different meaning and role and they became the springboard for research, uh, 